Stars, Massive Legend here! Max Stanley, better known to most by his YouTube username, Max Mofo. He's one of YouTube's most legendary creators, yet despite this, he doesn't get the same amount of credit or praise that perhaps his two main YouTube co-stars do. And I think that's a little unfair. Despite Max having created content on YouTube for over 10 years and building a fiercely loyal fan base, no one has made a proper in-depth video on his career and the impact he's had on the site. So I would like to take the honor today and present to you the story of Max Mofo, YouTube's massive legend. Our story begins in 2007, a time where YouTube's layout was still in its infancy and the homepage looked a whole lot different to what we see today. In November of that year, an Australian teenager by the name of Max Stanley would sign up to the website under the username Max Mofo. He wouldn't upload his first video until nearly a year later in October of 2008 when he posted an animation called Stickman breaking free. He would only upload a few times over the next two years until he started regularly posting videos towards the end of 2010 and start of 2011. While these first few videos are no longer available, they do still exist on the internet. Videos of Max playing the Super Mario theme on his bass guitar and showing off his juggling skills are some examples of his earliest YouTube videos. However, there was one video posted on the 1st of June 2011 titled The Worst Sandwich Ever that would give us a real taste of what was to come from Max and his style of content. So me and Julian are going to be making a good sandwich here today. Put some baked beans. The video consists of an 18 year old Max and his friend Julian making a sandwich out of disgusting ingredients, eating it and then in typical Max Mofo style, throwing up. Max's channel at that moment in time around mid 2011 had around 5,000 subscribers and he'd just been made a Google AdSense partner, something that was relatively rare at the time for a channel like Max's. This is something that he's actually spoken about in more recent times. I had a job for f two days. The only job I ever had was for two days. Yeah. It was binding books. I f put the spine and the two page and all the rest of the pages into the spine of the book. Yeah. And I bind it together. Yeah. I worked for two days doing that, taking the train all the way into the city, f whatever else. Poor me. And I was like, I can't do this. There's huh. no f way I can do this. I'm going to try to do YouTube. I'm going to go full time. What, doing what year was this? Like 28? 11. It would have been 2011. It would have been a year before I met you. Yeah, so I, I got partnership when you couldn't get money from it. It was really hard to get partnership really early, yeah. Yeah, I want to try to do YouTube fully or whatever else. I'm not going to f I'm either going to go into either way. I'm going to do it, have a job, I'm going to do YouTube. And I decided to do YouTube. Towards the end of 2011 and start of 2012, Max started uploading mail time videos where he would open posts that had been sent in by fans. Dylan's letter is actually easy to open, unlike everyone else's. Right, first thing I see is a drawing of me looking pretty emo there. The second thing that I haven't opened yet is... I've got it upside down. Hey Max Mofo, hey is spelt like hey bale, you moron. I'm just kidding, settle down. I am addicted to your videos and it's my dream to star in one of your videos. Well Dylan, I wouldn't say you're the star in one of my videos, but your art is on my wall. Alongside this, he also started uploading trolling videos. Now in these uploads, he would go onto websites like Omegle and record his interactions and then post them on his channel. Don't tell anyone, please. If dad finds out that I'm picking my nose, he's gonna, he's really gonna make me, he's gonna hit me with the cane. Suck, <laughs> shit. Max would even troll his own audience when he posted a video titled Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3 Easter Eggs Top 10. All right, well, it's a windy day here at the park, but I guess you came here to see the top 10 Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3 Easter Eggs. All right, well, this first Easter egg was originally found, claimed and sent in by a user named uh, Big Piss Sucker 25, I think. 
And this is the Easter egg that he sent in. You can clearly see it's a Modern Warfare 3 Easter egg. However, where Max would start to find real success would be with prank phone calls. He would promote these videos by asking his fans on his Facebook page to go to the website memebase.com and upvote his videos. He would find great success in doing this and in March of 2012, his video titled Penis in the Xbox Tray would be featured on the Memebase homepage. Hello, thank you for calling Xbox customer support. My name is Edward and may I have your name please? Um, my name's Dave. Um, did, uh, did I hear correctly that your name is Edward? Yes, Edward, yes. Mm -hmm. Alright, I was just uh, How can I help you today? Um, I've been hung up on twice, um, obviously because uh, no one's taking what I'm saying seriously. It, well, oh god, it's quite embarrassing, but um, for reasons that I'm not really willing to go into too deeply, um, the end result is that um, my... Uh, meat log, my um, like my wiener is stuck in the disc tray of uh, the Xbox. I've closed it on my penis, and um, uh -huh. mm -hmm. I was just basically I was just wondering how to manually mm -hmm. get um my penis out of the tray. He posted on Facebook saying, thank you so much to memebase.com for featuring my video. I still can't believe it. Boosted my subscribers by plus 1,100 in less than 12 hours and gave me a quick 50,000 views. Appreciate it highly. Max's channel was really starting to grow and so was his fan base. His regular mail time videos alongside the prank phone calls were proving to be a big hit on the site. By August of 2012, he'd surpassed the 100,000 subscriber mark and had gained over 9 million views on his channel. To spread out the different style of content he was making, he would set up three channels alongside his main one. MaxMofo2, where he posted extra pieces of content and bloopers. MaxMofo Pokemon, where he would post videos of him opening packs of Pokemon cards. And MaxMofo Games, which consisted of videos of Max gaming. However, as is a normal rite of passage for any YouTuber, one of Max's prank calls would land him in a little bit of controversy, and he ended up being featured on Australia's Nine News. Sam Asal named his crash repair business Lord of the Dings nine years ago for a laugh, but in the last two months it's been beyond a joke. Not funny at all, no. It's, it's killing us in the business. His Elizabeth workshop is bombarded up to 40 times a day with prank calls. One has gone viral, already getting almost 200,000 hits on YouTube. Lord of the Dings, Sam. How you going, Sam? I was wondering what, um, what Lord of the Dings is. Crash repair. What repair? Crash repair. Oh, okay, it's a pretty stupid name. Why'd you call, oh, yeah. why, why you call your store something stupid like that anyway? Why are you such a smart ass with a big mouth? Mate, don't start sh with the phone. Don't be a phone warrior. Yeah. Lord of the Dings, yeah. that is a fucking horrible name. Yeah. Who decided this? Yeah, come down. C come down and I'll quote your car, you f with. You come down here, I'll quote your head with a rock, mate. What's your name, mate? What's your name, f***ing? No, I'm coming in there. That's good now. Go and get a life. Police say there's little they can do when it comes to phone pests. There are strict Commonwealth laws governing when they can trace calls and generally they need to be threats of harm or of a sexually explicit nature. Now at his wit's end, his decade-old business name could end up on the scrap heap. I hope not. I shouldn't have to. Virginia Langerberg, Nine News. The perceived negative attention towards Max from the news feature wouldn't slow him down. However, two channel strikes and a two-week suspension would. Max's Omegle trolling series would land him in a little bit of trouble with YouTube. Firstly, in August of 2012, after one of his Omegle videos showed a guy fiddling with himself. Although the clip was censored, it was deemed inappropriate and YouTube deleted it and gave Max his first strike. Then in November of 2012, the same thing happened again when Max was pretending to be a 12-year-old girl on Omegle. He explained in a Facebook post, two weeks suspension from YouTube, second strike, one more account warning and I'm gone for good. Apparently, pointing out a is considered a bullying these days. See you in two weeks, let everyone know on all my videos that I'll be returning in two weeks and that I have a suspension. 
Max is back! So if you guys follow me on Twitter or are subscribed to my Facebook feed, then you will probably know what's going on. But other than that, you may have been left in the dark. I can't actually inform anyone on YouTube because at the moment I'm banned and I can't post, I can't do anything, I can't make videos, I can't see any of my channels, I can't log into any of my channels. Everything's f***. I'm going to have to play it cool for a while. There might not be as many Omegle videos as I can't take risks. If I get three strikes, then I'm dead. With Max's suspension over, he was back into the full swing of things and even released his own app on iTunes and Android. It was a soundboard called the Max Mofo Prank Board where you could use over 400 lines from his prank calls. Hey guys, it's prank time, bitch. Have fun, bros. So without a doubt, 2012 would be quite a year for Max. His mail time series and prank calls were continuing to grow in popularity and he would also start to introduce extreme challenge videos into his content. Challenge videos at the time were very popular, but Max would take them to a whole new level that no one else could match. His three liter milk challenge video consisted of him putting green food coloring into a three liter milk bottle and drinking it as quickly as possible, which ended up causing him to throw up green vomit. He would then take on the infamous cinnamon challenge. Okay, here we go. We're gonna take off the top. Normal cinnamon challenge first, and then I'm gonna try to eat the rest of it. <laughs> I can't breathe. <coughs> Fuck, I can't eat it. You know what, Tate? These style of videos would generally get a slightly higher view account at the time than his other videos. As a result, he would continue to make them, but things would get far more extreme and messy. In 2013, Max would introduce How To Basic into his challenge videos. My name is Max Mofo, this is How To Basic, <laughs> and this is Milk Challenge Extreme Edition. The faceless Aussie YouTuber and friend of Max would film most of these challenges and would add to the general mess and madness of the videos. While Max would carry on with the usual upload schedule on his main channel, he was also posting across his three other channels. And this is where Max is arguably one of the most adaptable YouTubers the site has seen. If you were into prank calls on his main channel, then you could subscribe to that. But if that wasn't your cup of tea, then you could subscribe to his gaming channel. And if you weren't into gaming, then you could follow his vlogs on his second channels. And if you were a Pokemon fan, you could subscribe to his Pokemon channel. So he covered a lot of different genres, which gained him lots of fans from all different types of backgrounds. And I think it's that adaptability that led to him becoming so popular and such a huge fan favorite. During 2015, two of those channels would reach the big milestone of 1 million subscribers. Firstly, his main channel, and then later on his gaming channel. However, after uploading a challenge video on April 4th, 2015, titled The Human Chocolate Challenge, he wouldn't upload on the main channel again for eight months. He returned in December to explain why. Hey guys! Merry Christmas! I quit YouTube. Um, I haven't actually. Uh, this is a little bit of a clickbait I've got going on there, but I'm glad you clicked this video. I wanted to let you know that I am not doing prank calls anymore, and I'm very glad that I was able to have that as a staple on my channel to and a pedestal to get where I am today. But I have no passion in doing prank calls anymore, and I want to retire it instead of doing something that I don't love doing. So while the prank calls had now been retired, a new era of content was on the way that would end up becoming some of the most influential to ever grace the internet. Max would play a key part in bringing together a group of creators that would be known as the Cancer Crew. Its main lineup consisted of iDubs, Max Mofo and Filthy Frank. However, How To Basic was often the man behind the camera and Max's friend Chad, also known as Anything For Views, would become a key part of their videos. While they wouldn't make a lot of videos together, the ones that they did were incredibly popular. The now deleted Cake Trilogy, the Deadly Twister videos, Super Trash Bros, and my personal favorite, The Gentleman's Guide. So then I told her, 
Let me see your tits, fat bitch. <laughs> <laughs> this group immediately became a firm fan favorite and the memes that were born out of their videos were incredibly popular and are still used on the internet today. I'm gay. <laughs> <laughs> the crossover between the three wouldn't last beyond 2016, but these collaborations together still continue to grow in legendary status even to this day. The Cancer Crew are now considered the flagship of a long gone era on YouTube of edgy content, a brand of comedy that's no longer acceptable or allowed on the site. And as such, they are now remembered as the last creators to keep that type of content alive. Generally, the plaudits go to iDubs and Filthy Frank when people look back and reminisce about these old videos and Max doesn't really get the same praise that the others do. The reality is that without Max, none of that era would have happened. He was the untitled leader of that group and brought together Filthy Frank and iDubs and directed most of the videos as well. There is also a strong case to say that without Max's influence on Ian's career, there would be no iDubs. It's all these facts that make Max far more influential than he's given credit for and truly makes him a massive legend. Sadly, due to demonetization across his main channel, Deadly Twister 2 would be Max's final upload on the 7th of October, 2016. While he would occasionally upload to his gaming channel and second channel, the uploads were slowing down. From 2017, his main focus would be on his Pokemon channel. Max has always had a deep love for the franchise and has been opening packs of cards and toys on YouTube for nearly 10 years now. And he's one of the biggest Pokemon channels on the site. And as of September 2021, sits on 1.68 million subscribers. However, what sets Max apart from other Pokemon channels is quite literally Max. Well, today we are rating the Pokemon that we find <laughs> the most <laughs> sexually attractive. We open it up like so, we flip it around, we have a code, there's the code, we go like this, one, two, three to the front, we get rid of this, we go like this to there, to this to that, then one more pack! God damn it! We're moving, boys! Dark Gyarados pre-release. 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 His non-serious approach to his videos is unlike any other Pokemon YouTuber. And I feel that even if you're not into Pokemon, you could still watch his videos and enjoy them. And this makes him very unique within this genre on YouTube. So finally, we come to Max's most recent YouTube venture, Cold Ones. The channel Cold Ones is the brainchild of Max's friend Chad, and was originally called Anything For Views. During the podcast boom over the last three to four years, Chad decided to get in on the act and start a podcast slash talk show and named it Cold Ones. Hey guys, welcome. Um, you know, after the disappointment of the H3H3 podcast, I decided to make a podcast. I didn't know what I wanted to call it. It was either gonna be like beers with the boys or some but I thought, why don't I just rip off another podcast? So hot ones, cold ones. The podcast initially was going to be just Chad as the main host, but after a couple of episodes, Max was brought on as a co-host. Yeah! You wanna take a seat? <laughs> Guys, if people didn't already know, or haven't picked up on it, Max is going to become a permanent co-host, my little bitch for the rest of the time here. Do we want to retake that or? No, 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 it's fine. It's fine, <laughs> co-host. That's all I wanted to get out. Cold Ones at the start had some big guests on from Jack's Films to PewDiePie in his first face-to-face -face podcast. And also they had Colossal Is Crazy's face reveal. Unfortunately though, when the pandemic hit, it became near impossible for many of the guests to travel to Australia and they had to adapt the channel in order to continue making content. In place of the interviews, they've started to make videos that involve challenges or paying out large sums of money on Cameo to see how far they can push the limits of what celebrities will say. 
It is incredibly entertaining content and with an absolute war chest in monthly donations on Patreon, which pretty much proves that Max and Chad are still as popular as ever, they're able to heavily invest a lot of this money back into the show while they're unable to get guests on due to travel restrictions. Cold Ones currently sits on 1.87 million subscribers as of September 2021, and while to my knowledge this is Chad's channel, it does mean that Max has and is directly involved with five channels that are all over a million subscribers. This shows that over the years his popularity has never declined and he's always remained popular on the site. Max is without a doubt a YouTube Hall of Famer whose influence and legacy on the site is often overlooked. He has a rich history on YouTube that spans nearly 15 years. I know this video perhaps isn't as exciting as some of my others, it doesn't follow a more sort of controversial creator, but I truly think Max is a great YouTuber and I love watching him. So I really wanted to make this video because I don't know how long I've got left on, on YouTube and I feel that he truly deserves to have a documentary about his history and career on the site so that people can look back and truly see the impact that he's had on YouTube. So that's it for this one. Thanks for watching. And if you enjoyed, check out some of my other documentaries and please don't subscribe because I probably won't make one of these videos again.